Okay. Good afternoon. Hi everyone. Um, right guys, let's make a start. Um, right, hey again. Uh, my name is Amir Kashmiri, as you might know. So I think I know some of you. You also, some of you are my personal tutors. So the rest of you, I don't think you've seen me. Um, so my, I am a lecturer in computational fluid dynamics, and I am responsible for this unit, thermodynamics. You're going to see me a lot, unfortunately, uh, you know, for the next 12, 13 weeks, twice a week. Uh, and unfortunately, the timing isn't great, because it's going to be in the afternoon, 4 to 5, 3 to 4, on Mondays and Thursdays. So I'm really sorry for that. I tried to put the, the lectures in the morning, but as you know, this room is actually quite busy. So it's very difficult to find this room available in the morning. Um, and I, I'm also aware that you've had one lecture this morning, 9 to 10, and now you have to wait for the whole day for this lecture, so thanks for sticking around. Um, now, uh, again, something else is, I'm not sure what's happening with this screen. I think I need to, well, I need to discuss with the um, technicians to fix this, but for now, if this is really annoying for you, then maybe you can just focus on the, 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 the two screens on the sides. Right. Um, the first thing we're going to do today is just Today is really light. Uh, I'm not going to do anything special. I'm uh, just going to do some introduction, overview of the unit. Um, I'm going to talk about myself a little bit. I'm going to ask you to talk about yourselves. Somehow we'll, we'll find out how. Um, and, and then once we get to know each other, then I think it makes it a bit easier to start. So let me just, before we start, let me ask you, um, have you all got a copy of, of the booklet? And also the, uh, the Steam table, yeah? So you've got to have a copy of these two. Is there anyone who hasn't got a copy? OK, if you haven't, please make sure you go and see uh, the reception, B15, in George Beck. You have to sign for these, and then you get a copy of these. These are very important. You've got to keep these uh, throughout the whole semester, and probably the, throughout the whole year, three years that you, you are here, because you're going to be using this stuff a lot, especially this one. This is what we call steam tables. And you're going to be using them in any um, thermodynamics modules that you're going to have over the next uh, three, four years. So very important. Um, today, because I'm going to make some, we're going to make a start on, on the first chapter. Uh, those of you who don't have a copy of the book, please maybe make, make a note on, on the side or on a piece of paper or something. And you can transfer over to your booklet when you have it. Otherwise, this is going to be recorded on a podcast, and you can revise the podcast, um, and hopefully that's, that's going to give you some idea on, uh, on when it comes to updating your notes. Right, okay, let's make a start on, on this. Um, so first of all, happy new term. Um, I know you've got mixed feelings about the new term. Uh, it's not as exciting as, as the new term. Um, as I mentioned, mixed feelings. I think some of you are more like this. Um, some of you are probably more like this. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm the same. So, uh, you know, for, for us, for academics, when the, the term starts, we're like, oh, God, not again. Uh, I mean, because we've got, what, what is interesting is that when I was actually doing my undergrad here, um, in, actually in the same room when I was doing my thermodynamics, I thought academics are just there to teach. And if they don't respond to my emails, it's like, bloody hell, where are they? You know, I mean, I'm supposed to be uh, asking questions, I have to respond. These days, academics are just bombarded with so many things um, that it's just really difficult. And I mean, my, in my case, for example, this is the only module that I, I teach. Um, my whole teaching load is two hours per week in one, one semester. Believe it or not, um, this is the only teaching unit I've got, but still I've got so many stuff that it's just so difficult to, to focus. But I said that not as an excuse. Um, it's just to say that, you know, um, I want to make this process, the, the whole teaching, the whole experience, really smooth for you and for myself. I want to make things easy. I want to make the communication easy. Um, I don't, I'm not here to give you a hard time. And please don't give me a hard time. You know, I've got enough headaches. Um, and uh, I, I think you're going to enjoy this unit, actually. Um, I think I'm hoping that this unit is going to be one of your favorite units this year. Now, teaching materials, um, as you can see, I've got everything in one place. Um, so you've got one single booklet, very high quality stuff. This is because I want you to keep this, as I mentioned, for the, for the rest of your, your, um, your study uh, at the University of Manchester. But also later on, the stuff that are in here, you're going to use them you know, um, when you get a job, hopefully. 
Now, something about the booklet and the structure of the booklet. Um, I tend to keep these everything so organized. I, I, my, this is my, how my brain, my brain works. I can't deal with you know, um, not having consistency throughout. So the way I see the booklet, we've got five sections, if you like. Um, we've got the main content, obviously, which is compulsory. Um, and you need to cover all those. And everything in the main content will be, um, it will be assessed on. There are some parts which are self-study, which means I expect you to go and read those parts and those pages in your own time, preferably beforehand. Uh, but you know, if, if not, then obviously after the lecture, it's, it's, it's great to go and, and read those parts. Again, they are compulsory, which means you could be assessed on them. Um, but really, the, the self-study parts are the, are the parts which are necessary for you to understand the, the main content of, of the booklet. Each chapter also has um, an appendix or appendices sometimes, um, and there are again they're highly I really highly recommend them um, to, you know for you to go and, and study and, and review them because some of the stuff in appendices actually you could be assessed on, but again mainly the point of appendices is is, is an additional support for you to understand the main topics. There are also some parts uh, called optional readings or you know, some, some pages which I might skip and say this, this part I'm going to skip. Um, what I mean by that is that if I'm skipping something and I say this is optional, that means you're not going to be assessed on that. Um, you can, if, you, if you wish, you can just skip that um, and not go through that. But again, it's actually for your own information. You know, these are some of the stuff that you thought is complementary to have in this booklet. And of course, you've got the tutorials at the end of each chapter. Um, We've got more tutorials than we can. Uh, we have the time to cover. Um, normally, in each tutorial session, we have time for three, maximum four questions. But we normally have eight, nine, ten, twelve questions in each chapter. And it is extremely important to cover all the tutorial questions. Um, the solutions will be available to all of them, not just answers. Um, the full solution. And I expect you to to go and review those. And of course, if you have any questions, then you can bring those questions to the tutorial and ask the, uh, the tutors. Now, Blackboard. Um, just going to quickly go to Blackboard. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen that, uh, but this is our page. Lots of uh, happy faces there. Um, we have five tutors. Um, you can see their email addresses and their names there. These are going to be the, the guys who are going to be conducting the tutorials for you. All very experienced, very interactive. I've chosen them. Um, you know, I've done interviews. It's not just you, know, you, my friend, just come up. You know, it's not like that. Um, and you know, they are they're doing their PhD. Some of them, are, like Adrian, for example, is you know he's a lecturer. They're all qualified. You can ask them any questions, and you know you can be sure that they, they will know the answer to your questions. And you can also answer. You can also email them directly if there's something that came up in the in the tutorial session. Please make sure that you contact them as well. Something uh, about the timetable. If you have gone through the first page of the timetable in your booklet, you might realize that there is a, um, there's a, there's an, an error. It's a simple error, but which means it's just very annoying. Um, due, due to the timetable is time issue, um, the first session, obviously, you have to start the first session today. In a timetable which is in your booklet, it's, everything is just one, one week ahead. And which means you just have to really just change um, well, I think the easiest way to do that is uh, if you the easiest would be if you, for example, do this, and you just realize that everything is just um, one week um, ahead. In time, though. but the rest is actually exactly the same. The, the plan, the, the deadlines, Easter break, everything is actually just going to be shifted one week. That's only, hopefully, that is the only error in, in the booklet. Um, and it's actually probably my fault, really, uh, for, uh, for um, the inconsistency in the timetable and the, uh, the, the, the teaching plan. Okay, so that's just about the, uh, the plan. Let's just go back. On, on the, um, the blackboard, 
We also have um, the PDF version of, um, of this book. As you can see, the, uh, the actual booklet here. And we also have something called the summary booklet, which, is, which summarizes each chapter in about two to, two, two, two to three pages. This is just a very quick revision. If you want to, like, the night before the exam, if you just want to have a quick recap on, on each chapter, then I think that is the, um, the booklet for you to, to, to review. Um, data sheets. In here, you'll see there are two, I'll just put this on a single version, um, so you can see exactly what you will, you'll see on your data sheet. We've got two versions of the data sheet. If you look at your booklet, on the second page, you have a list of formulas. This is what we call data sheet or a formula sheet, if whatever you want to call it. And this lists all the equations and all the formulas that you'll need in this unit and also for the exam. The important thing about this is that I, I, I try to um, use the, exam, the, uh, the, the formula sheet as often as possible because this is something that you're going to be using in the exam. You're going to be given ex the exact copy in the exam. And if you know what equations you'll be given, um, you don't have to you know, ask me, like, oh, do we have to memorize this equation? Do we, do we not have to memorize this equation? If there's something not here, then you have to know, uh, or you're not going you know, to be really asked for. So that just makes it a lot easier. Um, all this, the solutions to the tutorial questions will be uploaded here af right after each tutorial. So on Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock when you finish the tutorial, the solution for that specific session will be, up will be uploaded on, on this page. Um, past exam papers. Um, for the past three years, I've got a PDF version of the exam papers and the solutions. Um, very important to to, memor um, to, to go through um, before, the, before the exam. In this section, um, there are two files, thermodynamic frequently asked questions uh, and also some very generic glossary. Um, what it means here is that in FAQ, there are loads of questions that some of them maybe you haven't thought about yet, but I think these, are the th these two files are quite useful. When it comes to the end of the unit, I want you to just have a quick look at some of these questions and it might actually answer lots of questions that you've always have, have had in your mind about some of this concept, but you never had the opportunity to ask. And these are really common questions. Um, about 40, 50 questions, really, I think. Uh, 31 questions. Um, very useful. And also the same with some basic definitions of some of the terms that we'll, we'll come across. Again, some of them we, we may not cover this year, but you know, if you've heard some of them, then obviously these are, this is a, uh, a very good overview of, of the definition of those um, terms. Um, there, is an, there are two books um, in terms of um, electronic version of these two books. You can download them. They're free. One of the, the first one is, is quite good, the modern thermodynamics. The second one, I don't, I'm not a big fan, thermodynamics for dummies. But it's just, you know, just in case if anyone wants to, to have access to that, then that's, that's there. The, the book which mainly is actually the main teaching book uh, is actually this one. Um, it's the Thermodynamics and Engineering Approach. It's listed in your booklet. Um, that's the main book. There are copies in the, of this in the library. I think there are in the Jules Rock Library, about 15 or 20 copies. If you want to get a copy of that, this, this is quite useful. The first seven, eight chapters, these are the chapters that we're going to be covering almost um, in, this, in this module. If you want to buy this, it's fine. It's about 140, 150 pounds. This is quite expensive. Um, but, you know, I, I think the reason why you have this booklet is because I don't assume that you're going to all buy a copy of that. And this is going to be sufficient, um, really, for the exam this year. There's, I want to make this clear. There's no question in the exam or in an assignment which will be outside of this booklet. If you know this, if you're happy with, this, with the content in here, you're absolutely fine. The book really is just there for you to support you if you don't understand a topic, if maybe a topic is just too shallow here and you want to have more in-depth knowledge, then you know that's when you, you go to the book. And that's it. So that's about um, that's about this. Um, assignment. So you've got, as the booklet says, We've got one quiz, which is going to be on the 19th of March, and that is worth 
The remaining 80% will be a normal two-hour exam in May. The quiz will be based on a, on a blackboard multiple choice um, quiz. You can, you can access the quiz anywhere on the campus um, as long as you are using the University of Manchester's IP uh, and you can have open book, you can do whatever you want, you know. The questions are going to be randomized. So you can sit down with your, with your friends, but you're not going to get the same questions and there's a very strict time, time frame on, on the quiz. You have to complete the quiz within that short frame, with that short time frame, um, and you're going to get a score on that and that's going to be 20% of your, of your mark. I'm going to give you more details about the assignment later on, but that's just going to be very easy, very quick. You're going to get the, the, the results uh, very quickly uh, and the feedback there as well. And exam, to our exam, I set the questions just last week, so I know exactly what questions I've set, easy questions, and I expect you all to, to pass. Last year, the average mark for this unit was 62 or 63. I want to bring that up to 65. That's, that's my target. So I'm going to make it easy uh, this year, slightly. But it's up to you as well. I mean, you know, you can't just give you all the questions, really. Um, You've got you to work, obviously. And that is the timetable. Uh, the, uh, the, the teaching plan, as I mentioned, just one week um, uh, ahead of, of what is actually written in the booklet. Now, I talked about the core satisfaction. The reason why I care about this unit is because this unit, and I'm very grateful to the students who participated in, in the survey last year, got, this unit got 4.4%, sorry, 4.4 out of 5. 4.4% isn't, isn't that great. Um, and, and I want to keep that really at least 4.4. I, I want to make sure this unit is actually even better this year. Um, last year was the first year I, was, I, was, uh, I took over this, this unit. This unit used to be not as successful, uh, and, I, you know, and, I, and I was lucky to have very good students last year, very good tutors, and I want to make sure that this unit now stays as one of the best units you know, um, in, in the whole cohort of mechanical and aerospace engineering. And so that's my target. Now let's set some ground rules, because these ground rules are, are important in order to maintain uh, a very good dynamic in the class. Coming late, um, if you don't want to come to the lecture, I don't mind. I don't care, really. Uh, I'm not, I don't care about, there's no signing sheet, there's no, no attendance, nothing like that. If you want to go and sit down in your pajamas and watch it on the podcast, you know, you can do it. But I think it's very important to be engaged in the class. Uh, when you are in the class, first of all, you can come and see me after the, after the lecture. You, you talk to each other. And there are things which are not recorded in the podcast. Uh, and also, being in this environment is, is very important. And of course, if you decide to come to the lecture, please do not come late. Um, this is a large room, and we, when you start coming late, 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, then it's just going to be very disruptive. Chatting, um, it's annoying, really. Um, and I, I don't, again, I don't mind you chatting, but the problem is, because it's normally it's about 300 of you in, in this room, chatting makes the, the room noisy, and it stops people uh, from being able to listen. So I wouldn't tolerate chatting, please. Any feedback, any suggestions at any point, you can send me an email. I normally respond to emails within 24 hours, up to 48 hours, uh, and it's a very effective way of, of communicating with me, and I'm, I'm very happy to have any feedback at any point. The format of the lectures, as you know, two hours. Uh, we normally start um, just uh, at, at, the, um, at the top of the hour, and then we'd run for about 50 minutes, and I'd try to finish 10 minutes to, um, to 5 on Mondays and 10, 10 minutes to 4 uh, on, on Thursdays. I mentioned about emails. Now, a little bit about me. Um, I did all my studies at the University of Manchester. In terms of career, I've had a very boring career. Um, all the University of Manchester, I, I did my undergraduate in mechanical engineering, in, as I mentioned, in the same um, school. It used to be called UMIST at the time, now it's University of Manchester. Um, master's, PhD, postdoc, then went to industry uh, for some time, got tired of industry, and then came back to academia. Um, my role now, I'm an academic, obviously. Uh, also, I'm the director of the business engagement, uh, which means I'm in charge of all the consultancy, all the liaison with, with businesses, um, all industry-funded projects that goes through me. Uh, and that actually, that takes a big chunk of my time, really, uh, on that. But that means that I, I normally have four or five companies coming to, to, to us, or me actually going to them every week. 
lots of meetings with companies, large, large grants. Uh, you know, we've got just about, in the last six months, we've got about something, something around 12 million pounds uh, on just businesses, you know, liver uh, not liver here, sorry, um, Unilever and, and EDF, uh, for example, these are just two examples. Very exciting, and that means that I'm sort of in, in I, I'm aware of the, uh, uh, the problems in industry, what we are facing out there, and that's why I'm not really focused on just purely academic stuff. I'm, I'm really sort of a hands-on, um, practical sort of type, of, uh, type of guy when it comes to, to research um, and studying. And my own research is computational fluid dynamics, as you, some of you might know, is simulating blo um, uh, fluid dynamics and fluid using computers. Um, I've, got a I've got a research team, as you can see this is a Christmas lunch uh, with some of my students, PhDs, postdocs, uh, and some masters. Um, and it's, it's very exciting, you know, we, we work on lots of very exciting projects. Um, I wouldn't have the chance to talk about this, some of these projects during this, this module, but obviously later on when it comes to selecting your projects, then you'll see some of my projects for, your final pro uh, for, for the final year uh, projects as an option, and that's when you, it might be important for you to, to decide if you want to join my team or not. Um, these are my contact details. My office is in George Beck uh, on, on the seafloor. That's the first office on your right. Um, that's my website, that's my Twitter, and now that's me, and I want to know more about you guys. Now obviously, there's a lot of you, so what I'm gonna, de what I'm gonna do now is I'm, I wanna ask you to get your phones, iPhones, laptops, whatever you have ready, uh, and then I'm, I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna ask you some questions, and, I'll, and you need access to the internet to be able to answer those questions. Now, as you might know by now, uh, I'm going to be using the visualizer. Now, last year, I think the feedback was very positive about using the lecture notes, um, actually going through the lecture notes page by page. I know you might be used to using PowerPoints. I don't like PowerPoints. I, I think if, I'm ex if I expect you to read this booklet, then I can't expect you to then go through the PowerPoints and then you know, assume that you're going to go through the booklet in your own time. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the booklet page by page and make obviously lots of notes on, on the side. Um, and this is going to be exactly, so when you go through the, uh, the materials the night before the exam, you know exactly that we've covered everything. And, um, and that's, I think, in my opinion, that's the best way of, of doing it. Some might argue that this is just absolutely boring of just going through the notes. You know, I could do that in my own time. I, I disagree with that. This is the best way that I've learned. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to do that as well. Um, so if you have any better suggestions or any ideas, obviously I'm, I'm more than happy to do that and take them on board. But in the past few years, this has worked extremely well. Right, so page two of chapter one. It's about introduction to thermodynamics. And I'm sorry about this um, projector now. Uh, we're going to fix that for next week, but I'm just going to use the lower part of the uh, visualizer to help you with, with that. Now, what is thermodynamics? Um, it's, it's quite complicated to think about one single definition of, of thermodynamics. It's quite generic. I don't want you to just think about one definition. What I, I want to tell you is, is why thermodynamics is important. I want to justify why it's important to have thermodynamics as one of the core modules in the first year for mechanical and aerospace engineers. If you think about any serious, any, any proper engineering system, um, I don't know, whether it's a power plant, refrigeration, engines, whether it's ice engines or it's, 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 um, it's jet engines, all of them have thermodynamic cycles in them. Now, you might wonder, for example, when you go to the, to the, to the kitchen and you've got the fridge, and you might have heard that maybe the, uh, the compressor in the fridge is not working, or maybe the expansion valve in the fridge is not working, and you might wonder, why on earth do we have an expansion valve in, in the fridge? Why do we have that coil just behind the, the fridge? You know, what's the point of that? Why do we have a compressor? Why, what are we compressing and why are we compressing? These are some basic questions that you might have thought about. There is no way to explain a cycle or the reason why we have those components in a refrigeration system or, or, or a power plant. You might, when you're driving, for example, on, a, on M6 towards, the, uh, towards London, for example, 
You might have some power plants, like Roncorn and other power plants um, on your right-hand side. Lots of power, point, power plants, actually, that you might have in the UK or in other countries. Most of them have a cooling tower, for example, and you have steam coming out of that. You might wonder, why do we have steam coming out of this, this, you know, this cooling tower? Why do we have all these power plants, whether it's nuclear, whether it's coal, whether it's, it's gas stations, why are they all on the coastline of the UK or in other countries, for example? Do you need really, really a, a, a river or a, or a pond or a lake um, you know, to help? To answer all these questions, there's no simple answer to any of them. You, know, you have to understand that there's a logic, there's a cycle which is behind all these systems. And what we are trying to learn in thermodynamics is to prepare you to understand those cycles. So the, the, uh, I think the last few chapters, we're going to be talking about cycles. But then later on, in the second, second year, in the third year, you're going to be focusing a lot on these cycles. And this is the foundation, really, um, what we're doing. I would say if I, wanted to, if I was forced to find out and come up with a, uh, with a simple definition of, for thermodynamics, it's mainly about dealing with the energy and properties of the energy. Um, that's just a, a, a simple definition. There are lots of laws that we'll have, not lots, but essentially four different laws uh, that are fundamental in thermodynamic, thermodynamics. You can see them here. These two are, are by far the most important and the most difficult to, to, to understand when it comes to the physical understanding of the, of the concepts. Zeroth law is something that I think we're going to have time next, next week to cover that. It's, it's a very simple law. Um, the third law also, it's something about temperature. Both zero, zeroth law and the third law are about temperature. Because temperature is, is fundamental in thermodynamics. The, um, the first law is about the internal energy, U. And the second law is about what we have, uh, a, a completely new concept called entropy. Entropy, I, I, I would say, is probably the most uh, challenging concept uh, to understand. I, I really struggled with entropy when I was, when I was a student here. Um, and, but I, I've, I've tried to, um, to come up with different defi definitions to tell you exactly what entropy is. And last year, from experience, I know that actually people understood exactly what entropy is. And we're going to do that as well this year. So don't worry about that. Um, I, I mentioned some of the examples of thermodynamic systems. And you all know these, these gas turbines and, um, and engines and power stations, car engines. These are some some real examples of, of thermodynamic and thermodynamic systems. I think an engineer, without having a solid background and knowledge in thermodynamics, is not a real engineer, because you can't explain lots of things without having that thermodynamics. Let's just start with some simple definitions. And we're going to be using some of these definitions a lot, actually, some of these terms. A system, sorry for hitting this microphone, it's so annoying, I know. Um, a system. Now, we work with systems. Anything, when I'm, when I'm talking about a, uh, a power plant, when I'm talking about an engine, that is a system. We don't call it an engine. Uh, the, the formal definition of that is, is a system, which is a collection of different um, matters and different components. A closed system, as you can imagine, is, is a system which does not allow any matter to flow through. So imagine this, this classroom. This could be a system. At the moment, all these doors are closed. No one is going in and out of this class. Therefore, this is a, a closed system now. If we start opening the doors, like in the break, for example, in five, 10 minutes time, when you leave the room, then this is now converted into an open system because the, there are boundaries which are open for the matter, which in this case is you, to leave the room or come in, 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 this, in the system. And what, what we mean by matter is really mass and particles. Surroundings, anything which is not contained within the system, therefore the foyer outside, the, uh, the Reynolds building in this case, that is a surrounding. Surrounding is what is obviously is surrounding the, uh, the system. We don't directly care about what is happening in the surrounding because it's mainly the system which is important to us. But occasionally, when there are, there's an exchange of energy, heat, radiation, etc., with the surrounding, then that is also something quite important that we need, to, we need to take into account. An isolated system is a system in the, naps, in, the, in the absence of energy flowing across its boundaries. Now, there are two 
systems that you might think actually they're quite similar, isolated and closed systems. What's the difference? In a closed system, the definition is that there's no matter flowing in and out of the system. And what we mean by matter is, again, mass, particles. In an isolated system, you don't even have an exchange of energy as well. So, for example, if you have a radiation, if you have something, a, um, uh, mm, if you have, for example, a radiative uh, source, you're not necessarily exchanging any matter, but some heat transfer is, ha is happening. And if that heat transfer is taking place, then you don't have an isolated system anymore, but you could still have a, a, a closed system. You could have a cylinder, which is completely sealed, but because it's exchanging energy and heat dissipation with the surrounding, then it is a closed system, but not an isolated system. You only have an isol isolated system when there's complete, um, uh, complete seal of the energy and matter exchanged between the system and the surrounding. So that's the difference, energy and matter, when it comes to closed systems and, and isolated ones. And of course, the most important one is the control volume. I know you've done a lot of control volume studies in, uh, in fluid mechanics. Control volume is not just in thermodynamics, you have in physics, in fluid mechanics, and other subjects, but it has, broadly has the same definition. Um, it is very important to define a control volume which defines where you're doing your calculations with. So for example, if you're, doing the, if you're applying our, our, our equations, our formulas to this room, the control volume would be the surrounding and the walls of this room. And normally control volumes are, um, are important when it comes to transport equations. We've got lots of transport equations. We have, similarly, for example, we have continuity and Navier-Stokes. They are based on some transport equations. And in thermodynamics, we have transport equations for entropy, for entropy, and other things. And normally, control volumes and transport equations would result in derivations of very important equations in thermodynamics. We'll come back to this uh, later on. Some examples of closed systems. I, you know, I gave you the, the example of the classroom and the lecture room. Uh, if this is a closed system at the moment, there's no matter is flowing in and out. But it has a fixed volume. The volume in this room doesn't change. You could also have a closed system, but that could actually have a, uh, it could be moving, and it could be the volume could be variable. It could change. If you look at this piston and cylinder, it is closed, so no matter is actually going in and out, but the volume can, can vary. On the other hand, if you've got open systems, then you can assume that you've got a control volume, some flow is coming in, some will go out, and what we're interested in is in this control volume in here. You could again have a, an open system with fixed volume, which is a classroom, by opening the doors and windows, like just now. Or you could have, again, a, 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 a variable space or, or volume, which could be a, a, an engine. Um, this is a typical, so an engine, IC engine, with cylinder and a piston and having valves, that is a typical example of, um, of a moving uh, control volume. So, what we're going to do now, um, we've covered almost about four pages on, on this chapter. I'm going to stop here now, and on Thursday, we're going to carry on from this page. We're going to talk about properties, cycles, uh, and then we're going to finish off this chapter next week. Right, thanks very much. If you have any questions, I'm going to be outside. Please come and find me now.
Good, yeah, you could. Thank you. 